Good afternoon, I Succeed High School. I'm Angela Robinson and I'm presenting today with Stevens Henniger College from Boise and Nampa High School here in Idaho. Um, I'm very excited to talk to you guys today about making good choices. I will talk to you about Stevens Henniger College as we go along, but first of all, I want to just bring you on as why should I make good choices and give you the tools to do them. So Steven Seneca College is a career in tech ed college, career in tech um, meaning it's a hands-on college that's very small and we do extensive health services, graphic arts, information technology, computer science, and business. So just follow me along. I'm going to give you some homework and hopefully you'll play along with some of the slides. I've titled this 4651 on purpose because I, I want you just to imagine what if, what if in, as you go through your high school years, there were only que four questions you need to answer to find your purpose, your purpose or your calling or what you should be doing. There's only four questions you have to ask, ask yourself. So that is going to be your first line of homework. And what if there were only six career paths in the whole wide world to choose from? It looks like there's an infinity amount of jobs, but actually there's only six paths. So we're going to be talking about those and how to view them differently. And believe it or not, you seniors, especially, you only have five choices after high school that you can make. And at the end, like where many of you seniors are right now, you only get one vehicle to get you where you are going. You may be able to choose from eight or 10 or 100, but you only get one. So let's keep this 4651 in mind as we go along. So what if you could be successful? Have any of you ever been told this first bullet that you talk too much? Anybody out there? I wish I had your little voices here on the computer. Anyone been told you talk too much? Okay, I see some of you nodding your heads. How about you little artist? <laughs> your brain's floating in the clouds. It's like, come back down to earth. Any of you little artists been told you, you can't live like that. You've got to come down to reality. And the other ones, do you have to doodle and draw on everything? Um, I laughed at one senior I was saying that to, and they started laughing. And I said something like, oh, you're the one that colored on the walls. And this student said, no, I use Sharpies on the couch. I thought, yeah, I bet your parents were ready to kill you dead. But anyway, doodle and draw and everything. But did somebody say that Recess has always been your favorite subject. Anybody ever been told that? And I know I skipped one. I'll come right back. I want to talk to you about recess has always been your favorite subject. I can see you now talking about that one. Um, on the recess, the neatest part is, I don't know if you guys know this, but there is an organization. It is in back east in Washington, D.C., and it's called Kaboom, capital K-A, capital B-O-O-M. And they build playgrounds in less than a day. So if recess has always been your favorite subject, you can actually make some really good money playing on play equipment and designing it for the rest of your life. Um, this Kaboom playground, these are put together with doctors and surgeons. It's medical group that donates their money once a year and they build playgrounds in parks and at schools. So recess can be your favorite subject. Um, how many of you have been told you're not going to get to college with those grades? Okay, I can see your moms. If your parents, your dads are out there, yep, I think I told you that all along. Well, guess what? I'm here to tell you that you can be successful with those grades. And I keep meaning to put a little dash or a little blank on this next one, but how many of you, sports, dance, music, hunting, fishing, anything else you want to add into that? Rodeoing maybe? Life is about more than that. How many of you have been told that? And you go, what? Are you kidding me? There is more to life than that? So you can be successful, even if, yes, you have to take all those classes, you can be successful in doing every one of these things you might have been told. So that's for starters. I just want you to identify with me. And I have a feeling that some of you can really at least pick one or two. Some of you can pick five or six of those babies. So anyway, let's start with our homework. Here's your first one. Okay. Okay. 
Here's your first line of homework. So this is the four. So after doing all those questions, maybe this is your very first thing you guys are going to have to do. So if you are a freshman or a sophomore, you are in exactly the perfect spot to be in. Um, you seniors, you got to play catch up really fast. You juniors, you need to be answering this in the next month or so before school starts again. So I want you guys to write down um, on a kind of draw yourself a Venn diagram and what we're all headed for is you see that little gold star in the center that really really exists i don't know if you guys knew this but if you will take your fingers and put it like right underneath your ribs right where your rib cage meets and you push and you kind of go Whoa. that's that little button you used to push when you were young and you didn't want to go to school and you wanted to make yourself throw up so you just kind of push that little button well guess what it really does exist and this is called the seat of your emotions this is where all that little voice comes from so we are trying to find our passion and our calling what makes us tick and we're trying to match everything up to find that little gold star so here's your first order of homework what do you love to do and it can be anything remember our former slide just what is something you absolutely love to do as soon as you figured that out I love doing this it can be anything you need to go to the next one are you good at it and you seniors I want you to ask yourself am I great at it or could I be great at it so it's what I love doing am I good at it and then the next question you have to ask is can I get paid for this and I'm not talking about just can anybody get paid for it this is very specific to you can you personally get paid for what you love doing and you're good at and then the last question you have to ask yourself is does the world need you doing this so here's how it works I want you to kind of I'm going to give you kind of a uh, not so good example and then I'll give you a really good example so what do you love doing how many of you said you love sports or you love to dance or you love hunting those are some of the ones I've had in Idaho country and then I say well are you good at it and you go well absolutely can you get paid to do every one of those things I mentioned and maybe draw or write can you get paid yep and does the world it need it yes so take that as I'm saying it I want you to come with me and kind of mull this over it really is the most important piece it sounds simple but it's the most important piece for you so here's my not so good example what do you love doing well I wish y'all could see me what do I love to do I love to dance oh my gosh I love to dance anywhere any place love to dance so then I look at the next question so Angela are you good at dancing and I always have to say well heck yeah I think so and then I have to go to the next question Angela can you personally get paid to dance and I have to go well I'm not sure the world wants to watch me dance even on tables I don't think they want to watch me dance so and can Angela can you get does the world need you and I thought nope so guess what that's not gonna be my gold bubble right there that's not my star I may love to do it and I may be able to dance on the side but it is not where my passion is going to be for the rest of my life so let's do this one again what do you love doing well you know I love working with kids it I always have and I mean kids any age I don't care I love working with kids I love to teach it's just something I always knew I like to do am I good at it well guess what you guys I'm great at it if you haven't figured that out yet and can Angela can you get paid to teach you darn toot and I can and does the world need me to teach yes they do and now I can say I even get to teach the adults and the legislators so that makes it yeah I I did it and so I did find my gold passion right there so this piece I really want you guys to to own what do I love doing am I good at it can I get paid for it does the world need it because as we go to the next slide you're going to take that little gold star that's now in your gut and you're gonna put it um, it's into numbers into the six paths there are only six choices you're gonna take those four and you're gonna put them into six choices now so here we go so how many of you are familiar with this career clusters chart if you are familiar with it you've probably done some interest inventories it's very popular it's evidence-based now just a really good structure but I'm going to teach you or guide you on how to use this a little bit differently than maybe you've used it before 
So what I want you to do is take those four, those bubbles, those I'm, I love doing this, I'm good at it, I can get paid for it and the world needs it. And I want you to put it into one of those colored clusters. So let's just, for example, use the dance right there. Use that dance goes up into this purple category. It's the one where it says arts, um, telecommunication technology, information technology. That's a huge field because this information technology is in everything. Back. Sorry, guys. Anyway, so dancing is up in there, but say that that is your passion and it's something you really want to do. Um, so how do you want to portray your dancing? Even if you're good at it, do you want to teach? Do you want to work with animals, teach them to dance? Do you want to work with dancers in the health arena? Do you want to open up your own business? What do you want to do with dancing? So that is why it's so important to take that one the, of the four pieces you find and put it into your category. I'm going to give you a few examples here because this can be a little tricky to learn. Why is it important to you? Because uh, going back, there are so many jobs out there for us. And if we will work with ourselves, find our passion or our calling or what we think we're really interested in, put it into a cluster that'll help to guide us on making those choices. And I am going to tell you guys that this six cluster right here is really important because throughout the last 25 years, we have studied this and studied this. And do you know that 84 to 93 percent of the people in the world stay in their cluster throughout their lifetime? Now, do they switch off jobs? Absolutely. But they always go back to their passion. So if you're in the health science, um, place. Well, how many jobs are there in the health science? It can cover everything. You can even be over here in sports, the educating, training, human services. That's where your sports is in the blue category. And maybe you want, maybe you want to play sports for a while and then, oh no, you blow out your knee. Well, all of a sudden, maybe you want to help the sports. Does that mean you've changed your passion? And the answer is absolutely not. I still love the sports and it drives me. But you know what? I'm going to learn how to take care of people that are living the dream that I just blew my knee out on. So it doesn't mean that you've jumped categories here. It just means you've put it in another way. Um, to another spot. Now, let's take that same sports. Okay, you've played sports for a while, you've danced for a while, so you mix in the purple with the blue, you've danced, and then all of a sudden, shoot, you have something else happens. You know, you break your arm or something like that. And it, and well, you know what? I think I'm going to open up my own studio, or I think I'm going to open up a business to train athletes or to train people. So you may take your passion from purple and put it on over into the gold. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of examples now because I have a funny feeling I have some confused kids out there. So here's what I want you to do. Let's back up to what do I love doing? Am I good at it? Can I get paid for it? And does the world need me to do it? And when you find that, you've put it into a category now. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples. So say, I always have to tell, talk about my husband here because I live up in the mountains and um, I'm married to an old cowboy that's always used natural resources and logs and horses and agriculture. And so when I was trying to teach him which category he was in, because, you know, once you're a teacher, you're always a teacher. Um, so I'm trying to tell Jim which category he's in. And he says to me, well, I'm in the green one. And I laughed at him and I said, no, you're not. I said, I want you to take a look at that gold one where it says business, finance, and marketing. Because you know what, Jim? You are an entrepreneur. So all of you guys, um, come with me for a minute. What are the five or six qualities of an entrepreneur? Everybody knows what an entrepreneur is? Okay, you business people. For those of you that are answering me like yes and that already know, um, I'm going to go ahead and give you some of the five reasons people's are, people are entrepreneurs. Number one, an entrepreneur um, always has a great idea and they want to own their own business. So why do they want to start their own company or own their own business? One of the reasons is because they think they know it all and they usually do. Another one is they don't want anybody to tell them when they can come to work and when they can't. They don't want to be told how much money they can make and they don't want to be told what hours they want to use. They, they love to 
form their own ideas. So I laughed at this old guy, this old cowboy, and I said, Jim, you are in business. I said, you always love your own business. You like to do your own financing and marketing drives you because you market yourself. However, you use natural resources to drive your business. Your heart is not in the logs that grow. You're not a forester or in the horses that you raise. Your heart is in your business, but you use natural resources to drive your business. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes, no. Okay, let's go over here, the one I don't use very often. Down here, this manufacturing, science, technology, engineering, math, um, and transportation. I want you to notice in that transportation, oh my heck, that's where the money's going to be, you guys. As we watch these millennials come to light, um, transportation and up here, the food and agriculture and the water, natural resources, these are going to be two huge um, callings for you guys. So if you have any interest, those are really good fields. But let's take this agriculture and tech. We'll take the tech and engineering. Is technology and engineering in the health science? Technology is huge. Is it in the arts? Absolutely. All you have to do is watch the movies. Or in agriculture? Oh, my heck. We live in an agricultural spot. We know technology and engineering are in there and transportation and distribution. Oh, my God goodness, yes, um, business and management and education. So this particular orangish color, this is in almost every single thing. So if you just love to work with numbers or you love the architecture, construction, um, transportation, distribution, logistics, those kind of things, your mind works like that, then know that that's your passion. So which of these other five are you going to use to drive your passion? Okay. So we've done the four. You found your passion. Now we've done the six. You know what you're going to do with it. Because when you go now to find which school or where am I going to go with this, you won't be just pulling up CSI or um, CIS, excuse me, or one of these programs. You'll be able to look into the category where your passion is and then unload all those wonderful careers that are out there for you. Because you've done the four, you found your passion, you've done the six, you know which category you're in. Now we're on to, you only have five choices after high school. So let's look at what these choices might be. Okay, they all popped up at once for me. So let's talk briefly about these five choices. First of all, you can go straight into the workforce. Um, this is an incredible choice. Going straight into the workforce can be a great choice, even a great choice for a while. Going into the workforce, although the pros are, yes, it's instant money. Um, however, the cons are you can get stuck in the workforce. If you don't know why, going back to your passion and back to your cluster, if you don't know why you're going into the workforce, you're just doing it because it's easy and it's easy money then you've kind of flunked. You need to back up and do your homework. Going into the workforce to own your own business or, you know, I want to work construction, then make sure you work for the best. Own the company. Know that you're going to go to the top and or I have to be an apprentice to get to where I want to go. So the workforce, yes, can be a good choice. The next one is traditional universities. Many of us, um, traditional university, we went because we had to. Um, the job, my gut told me I knew what I wanted to do. I had to have a four-year plus degree to um, do what my passion was. But traditional universities aren't always for everybody anymore. There was a time it worked for most of us and or most of you. And But you know what? With these millennials, you guys, I'm not so sure it's always your best choice. So go back to your four, to your six, and say, do I really need a degree? Because there's some things I want you to know on traditional university. Number one, on average, a four-year college takes you five and a half to 6.3 years to graduate. So why is that important? Well, we're doing our homework. This is all about you. Remember, this slide's all about you. This is the five. When you are looking at traditional university in five to six years, that's an extra year or two of cost. So you need to add that in. But it's not just the cost. It's time. It's money. And I will tell you on traditional university, which I'm sure you all know this, but your classes are going to vary. Your schedules vary. And you have to do your prerequisites the first two years. And then is your prerequisite, did you, were you able to get into the class? Were you not? So those are all things that extend the time in trad university. 
Another thing I want you to be very aware of is those of you taking AO credits or um, dual credits, you make sure you're in the driver's seat, you seniors and juniors, you're upcoming to this in October when you apply, make sure that your credits will transfer over. And I don't mean transfer to the university as electives. I mean, you ask that university, is my English 101 and your English 101 the same class or do I need to repeat it? Um, I want to empower you to be sure to ask the tough questions. So we have the workforce as one choice, Trad University is one choice. The next choice you have is community college. Community college, again, excellent idea. Um, community colleges are really up and coming. Two positives with them. Number one is they're less expensive. Number two, they're easy to get into. And oops, and number three is that they offer some fabulous certifications right now. Uh, the trick on college, community college, is this, guys. Many times people start community college and they have not done their four and six homework. And they get in thinking that they're going to get their prereqs out of the way. And all of a sudden somebody comes a job or somebody comes along and goes, hey, I have a job making 12 bucks an hour. What happens to your community college if you don't know where you're going or why you're there? We see this all the time. You guys need to be aware of the success rates, the college graduate rate from community college. Be sure to do your homework and look that up. And what you're going to find is people will drop out of community college because it's inexpensive or because they don't know what they want to do. So here's the positive, extreme positive on community college. Number one, make sure you know why you're going. Because if somebody comes along and offers you a job for 12 bucks an hour, and then all of a sudden you know that when you finish your degree, you're going to be making $22 an hour plus, is that going to motivate you to stay in or not? So you... This is really important, you guys, do your homework. The next choice, number four, is Career and Tech College. Career Tech College, again, is an incredible idea. Career Tech Colleges are all over. Um, all They're for everything. The thing on Career and Tech Colleges, they're very up and coming with this generation. The main thing on these is their focus. They're usually a different type of schedule. They're hands-on. They're in a shorter amount of time, and many of them are designed to put you straight into a job. These are not fluff courses. Some degree programs, you will take some prerequisites, but some of them, you don't even take that. So if this is your passion, you might want to check career and tech colleges. I will tell you that some, and here's the downside of them, some of them are known to quote unquote cost more. Um, this is part of your homework. This is like I took you up to the traditional university and to the community college. Do the same with your tech. Do they accept dual credits? Number one. Um, do What does their price include? Because at traditional college and community college, you're going to have books, you're going to have lab fees, you're going to have a variety of things. So you ask the tough questions with career and tech colleges. Uh, Steven Senegar happens to be a career tech college, so I have done my homework on that one. Uh, the other thing on career tech colleges is, well, credits don't transfer. Let me back you up here for a minute. If you want to be um, go into automotive or diesel mechanics and then you change your mind once you're at UTI or, or YO Tech, are your credits going to transfer from YO Tech to BSU or UTI to BSU? There are some problems in there. So career tech colleges are for those that know what they want to do and it's specific. And the last one for you is military. Military is an excellent idea. However, do your homework. I did. This is just a um, uh, ideas of different colleges and career. What I want to point out on this slide is the same applies to if military is your choice. There are five branches of the military. Don't take the first one. Make sure that you are checking. Know your passion. Know your career choice. Then go or your path. Then figure out which one is going to work. Um, so this is where we are right now, you guys. You've answered your four questions to find your purpose, what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you can get paid for. You've found one of your um, six career paths. So now what you're ready to do is choose where you're going to go on your next path. Okay, you'll know right now after answering the four, the six, the five, you're going to know if you need to go to career tech, military, trad college, workforce, or community college. And then you juniors and seniors, I'm talking to you right now, um, 
the, it becomes easy because you've narrowed it down like a funnel. Take a look underneath that choice thing, like the funnel. You'll know which community college and you can start looking at which traditional college is going to offer me the best, which branch of the military, which career tech college for my purpose and my career cluster. Um, because now we're down to the final, final that you have to do when you're senior. So this is where a lot of you are right now. You've already gone through the four, you've done the six, you've done, I know which one I want to go to. Well, here's the deal. You still only get one choice. Just like the recent um, young man from um, Capitol High School, maybe many of you read about him. If you didn't, quite a guy. Um, he was accepted into the eight Ivy League schools in the United States. Woohoo! Smart guy. But you know what? He still only gets one choice. And so when asked, which choice do you think he should take? You know what? You've got to go back to what's my purpose? Uh, is this school going to provide it? Where's my path? Um, so I have eight choices, you know, eight good full rides. Well, guess what? If I make the wrong choice, do your payments go away? When you buy that cool looking car right there over that green one or the truck in the middle and all of a sudden you're driving down the middle of the road and you hit an elk on the way or you hit a big old boulder, uh, life begins to happen. What happens to that car? Do your payments go away? So the same is true for college. You've got to make the one choice that's going to work for you. If you're working in downtown or you're living on the Autobahn in Germany for a while, this green car may be absolutely perfect. If you're living up in the mountains, I'd suggest the FJ or the truck because you got a lot of snow to overcome and a lot of animals. So choose the school that's going to work for you. And one thing I'm going to just caution you on is don't base your choice on the price. I know many of you, that's really scary right now. I don't want student loans. Well, guess what? Loans are the way of the world. Um, so what I highly suggest to you is find a financial consultant at the school and really ask the hard questions. Because I will guarantee you in life, if you own a car, you're going to have car payments. If you own a home, you're going to have payments. If you uh, own your education, you're going to have payments. But if you do your homework, you'll know which payments work for you. And the biggest thing on choosing this vehicle and choosing the right one is you have to make sure what outcome's going to be. How much am I going to get paid when I graduate? Is there a job waiting for me when I graduate? Those are huge points. So now you've discovered you. You know your, you've discovered your gut. You've discovered your career path. You know which um, secondary you're going to choose and you've picked your vehicle, you've picked your college. So now it's really all about you. So that part ends your homework. And now I want to spend just a few minutes telling you about what Steven Sinegar can offer you. I hope all of you have can say, wow, that was worth my while. At least I learned something because I know you millennials. It's all about you right now. I love it. So anyway, here's let's talk about what this school may have. I love this quote. I found this on a seventh grade um, board a couple years ago and I thought, oh my gosh, that fits so perfectly into my PowerPoint because first we make our choices and I'm trying, you just learned the four choices, you, then you make your six, one of six, one of five, and your one because first we make our choices, then our choices make us. I think we can all um, look at that. And um, I don't know about you, but I want to be paid for my good choices. I don't want to have to pay for my bad ones. So let's take a look at Steven Seneger. And I have a few more slides that'll go in depth on each of these programs, but I want to give you a really quick overview first and then tell you about the scholarships. Oh, and this two scholarships, we have these every year. We give two to I Succeed. They are not based on your GPA and they're not based on your SAT scores. They are based on the right fit. If this college works for you, when you've gone through the 4651, if this is your college, then we, you can um, ask for this scholarship. And if it's still available, nobody's claimed it at I Succeed, it can be yours. So we have a school of technology. We offer um, degrees in networking and programming. We offer a bachelor's degree, which is what most of the business around here want. And our school with our accreditation has to place you into a job upon graduation. 
We have a school of business and we have six different ideas that are different emphases in our business and our bachelor's degree. In our school of business, you can get an accounting degree or a forensic accounting degree, which is catching the bad guys. So we have a school of technology, school of business, we have graphic arts, um, our graphic arts, graphic arts is all around you. And our graphic arts and web design bachelor's degree is on ground or online. And then we have medical health sciences. This is one of those careers that is not going away. We have associates and these are real important for you. We have medical specialties, certificates, and we also have a degree. So you would have an associate's degree and you can also sit for seven to eight different certifications with our medical specialties. I'm gonna be talking about this more in a minute. We have respiratory therapy. Um, that one's only a 20 month program. And the hospitals right now, there is a huge need for respiratory therapists. On the bachelor's side, we have health administration. If you would like to go on and become an administrator in a clinic or a hospital, we do have an HIM, that health information management. You can get a bachelor's degree in that too. It's very up and coming field. Average, it pays about $63,000 a year. And then we, you can get your bachelor's in respiratory therapy. So here's the part, oops, let me back up one. Okay, here's the part that you need to know. So any of you graduating um, in 2017, we have the $25,000 bachelor's degree scholarship and the $15,000 associate's scholarship. And um, to get these scholarships, you need to talk to your counselor and she will help you set up an appointment at one of our Boise or Nampa campuses. You make an appointment and go in and just check out the school, see if it's going to work for you. And if um, you'll work for it and check out the campuses, the programs, we need you to bring your families or your um, parents to check on the financing and get their blessings on it. And if it's a go, then you can apply for the scholarship. Okay. The next thing you need to know about us, let me back up before I do this one, is we do have our associate's degrees. Unlike community college, our associate's degrees take 20 months or less. And our bachelor's degree take 36 months, which is three years. And that is start to finish or less. And on the or less, I can say this because when you come to us with your high school transcripts, you sit down with our educational director and what he'll do is compare your high school transcripts to our college requirements. If you have had any classes, any um, dual credit classes or advanced opportunities classes that you have paid for through CWI or BSU, we can take those degrees. What we do is cross those off your time spent in class and it's also crossed off the money. So you can actually literally have your degree in 20 months or your bachelor's in three years or less. Um, another reason, oh, I'll tell you that one in a minute. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. So we are not a for-profit college anymore. In 2012, we became nonprofit status. We are nationally accredited with the Department of Education in Washington, D.C. That is the same place regional accreditation and national accreditations are accepted. What this means to you, this national accreditation means to you, is that when you go to our school, we are bound by our accreditation to place a minimum of 70% of you into a job upon graduation. And the other part is that we have to graduate 40% of you on time. So when you finish up your education, you will go straight in for a degree or for a job. So, so what I need to tell you about Steven Seneger on this part though, is that our tuition and our hours, let's start with our hours. They're kind of big here. Our hours are only Monday through Thursday. You go to school 8.30 till two o'clock in the afternoon, 11 to two. You only take one class at a time. Our hours Monday through Thursday, you can go in a, as a day student or an evening student or an online student. Um, so that allows you to be able to have a job. Your hours stay the same. Your schedule stays the same. We take care of booking your classes. Um, our tuition is all inclusive. What that means is what when you pay, 
you pay for graduation. So we don't charge you per credit. We charge you for the whole program in quadrants. So all of your books, supplies, your laptops, your equipment, your financial aid, your tutoring and lifetime refresher courses plus uh, $500 reimbursements for certs are all included in your price. And we are about the same when you include everything as the same prices as the colleges around. We can show you that. We have financial aid people to help you. So don't worry about FAFSA um, or scholarships. We have someone on hand to help you. And that career services person right there where it says career service planning and jobs, this is the person that meets you the day you come in, and that's the person that helps you get straight into your job upon graduation. Um, coming in the fall, we will be offering apprenticeships through the Department of Labor, which means halfway through your associate's or bachelor's degrees, you can apply for apprenticeships, which working will pay, help pay for your school. And the other thing I wanna say about us, oh yes, looking at these hours and how come we graduate sooner, that is because um, we teach in mods. You don't do a class for a whole semester. You do one class per mod, which is four weeks. And then you move on to your next mod and your next mod. So it is a year round school with those hours. You get two weeks off at Christmas, but you don't have to sit in a history class or an algebra class or um, an economics class for a whole semester. You sit in for a month. So if you have a class that is not real doable, you're welcome to, it's only a month and we can endure anything for that long for a degree. So what I'm going to do right now is if you're interested, you can um, text us or call us and the number's right there. And I am going to go into just a quick rundown of what these jobs may look like. Okay, I'm going to start with, um, so if you're interested, they're up there. I told you about the schools that we offer. So this is just gonna be a real quick rehab and you can leisurely look at these if you're really interested. Um, our IT program, one thing that's really happening, and I know those of you that come into Boise, Nampa, all this area, you're going to notice that the growth here is absolutely crazy. If you haven't driven in downtown Boise lately, you're going to know this piece is true. Um, of the up and timing, uh, 10 up and coming hubs in the United States, this means all the cities in the United States. Take a look at where Boise is. Pretty incredible, huh? I had no idea. When I first learned this, I thought, you gotta be kidding me, that was two years ago. Well, if you take a look around the area and look what's happening in downtown, you know that we are number seven in the United States for up and coming IT hubs. So here's what that means to you. Um, the Department of Labor, shh, let me go back. The Department of Labor, these are the, uh, from 2016, these are in our state approximately how much you're making um, in the average, the 25 percentile, you can break it down. These um, IT jobs are huge. We've got about 1,600 in the Treasure Valley that are going unfilled because we don't have anybody taking advantage of them. I will tell you these jobs are between 50 and $93,000 a year. Um, girls, if you are interested, oh my heck, they love to have the girls interested in this arena. Um, we have most of our graduates have jobs, three or four jobs they are choosing from between four to six months prior to graduation. No, you don't have to be a computer geek to go into IT. Being a small college, we can kind of intermarry all of our programs. Uh, all we want you to know is how to turn on and turn off a computer and probably a little bit about Word, and we can teach you the rest. So this is where the dollars are at this point. Certifications. We have in the IT program, we offer between 12 and 15 certifications. Um, most of you IT people, I don't speak computers very well, but most of you already know that um, these, you probably only want one or two, and these are the high, high paying computer jobs. If you come in with a Microsoft cert, um, we can take that right straight off of your degree, so you don't even have to sit through that one. Um, this is just kind of telling you guys, I put this together so that you have kind of an idea what the average salaries are. So you can, a web developer is somebody that 
makes the programs. Their annual salary, as you can see, is approximately $30 an hour. Oops, wrong way, sorry. Um, network administrators, these are needed at every business, it, from McDonald's to the schools to big corporations. Their annual salaries are about 76000 Computer programmers, oh my gosh, this is where the gamers begin. And then the next one, oh, this one is huge and up and coming. These are the information security analysis, and we have two instructors that this is their specialty. One of them is out of Las Vegas, so you know that security is a huge thing for his background. The salaries are big on this, and they are not going away. There's all kinds of job openings in the computer arena for this. Database administrator. Um, this is another huge piece, and I will tell you that this is the second half. Those of you that are interested in medical, if this is the second half of that HIM degree because where our health field is going is they want you to know all about the medical field and the human body, but they also want you to understand computers. The average salary in our area is about $63,000 a year for the HIM. St. Luke's and St. Al's are screaming for you guys. Software developer, whew, that's the ones that develop the big stuff. And they go on up. Programmer, programmers and software developers are where the huge dollars are. Remember, that program only takes you about three years or less. So again, just text or give a call. So I'm going to go quickly through healthcare, kind of the same way. Um, our eight certifications include your CNA. If you come to us with a CNA, you do not have to repeat the class. CNAs, you can see about their salaries. I will tell you in the hospital, they want their medical assistants, which are right underneath your nurse. They want you to have a CNA at the same time. Pharmacy techs make a little bit more money. We're, I'm not saying a pharmacist, that's an eight-year degree plus, but your pharmacy technicians are needed everywhere. These jobs are in high demand. The next one, this is the most popular one. These are the medical assistants that work in clinics, hospitals, everywhere. Uh, this is the most popular program. The next one, phlebotomy. If you like the blood and the stuff that makes the body tick, these, again, high demand. Billing and coding. Um, what I want to say here is I really love our degree program for our medical specialty certificate or medical specialties because it's an associate's degree with these eight certificates, which means you can sit for one or all the certs. I used to not talk much about billing and coding, but you know what? I have decided that billing and coding, number one, this is where the money is. Number two, you can work from home. Number three, if you want to be a medical assistant, and so you've received your medical assistant cert, but you've also sat and received your billing and coding certification. What is cool about that is say you go into working in the hospital and then in about four or five years, you wanna have a family. Well, you can easily work from home if you have this billing and coding cert. So this is a good one to have under your belt. The next one, Respiratory therapy. Um, respiratory therapy deals strictly with the breathing. Respiratory therapists are hired in the hospitals for the code blues. These are the ones that if uh, somebody codes blue in the, in the OR, you're in there eating lunch and you're up in OR and you're taking care of the breathing. You work hand in hand with the doctor and the nurse. You may be called down to the ER for an accident if someone's not breathing to the neonatal, up to NICU, up to the ICU. These are the ones we kind of like to call them the adrenaline junkies of the hospital. You're all over the hospital. A registered nurse will take a GPA, don't even go with a 3.5. An RN takes a 4.0 through high school and college. It'll take you a minimum of four years to get your registered nurse degree. With us, it takes 20 months to get your respiratory therapist, then you can continue on and get your bachelor's degree. The interesting part of comparing these two, a therapist only deals with the breathing, not the whole patient, just the breathing. Um, but they make approximately $5 less an hour than a registered nurse, pretty darn good money. So if you're interested in that degree, that's another really, real exciting degree. But it, and these work, respiratory therapists work hand in hand with the nurse and doctor. They'll work on life flights in the hospitals, in the clinics, with children with asthma, with older people. There's a big call for these. Okay.
And the last one I'm going to talk about is business and graphic arts could be in here too. Business, I will tell you it's really difficult to put a price on how much you make because owning your own business, um, you can make as much as you want or as little as you want. A business degree can take you anywhere. Um, this guy I found online was making $16,000 per week. I thought that was a pretty interesting sum. Um, accounting salaries are between an average thirty-two to 54000 a year plus. And again, you can just give us a call on whatever. We'll sit you down and we'll say, what do you want to do? And how can we help you? And just try to find, to put your 4651 together for you. So I hope you guys have learned a lot. Um, Stephen Sanagar College is located in Boise and we have a campus in Nampa over off of Midland. And we have one in Idaho Falls. And we also are an online university we have five different universities in six states so you can go ahead and get your master's degree if you want to also with us so if you're interested make an appointment and come in and see if it's the right fit thank you for your time